Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of Church at Home as we prepare for the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I'm Father Michael. Father Ed Estak. Father Joshua. And this week I think we're really being challenged by all of the readings, but the Gospel in a particular way, um, where we hold intention, the notion that Jesus is Savior, He's come to uh, bring peace. One of His titles, as Father Joshua mentioned when we were talking about this, is Prince of Peace. Yet in all of this, he warns us that there's going to be division, that the gospel is not always going to be received well. It's not going to be received easily. And when you try to receive the gospel and follow Jesus in your life, that that's where that division is sometimes going to be seen, when other people are not there yet. Yeah. We're also uh, thinking of how um, surprising this can be to some of us, or all of us, some of the time, some of us all the time, uh, is that... <laughs> Uh, we uh, we think we're doing something uh, good and faithful uh, and like Jesus and uh, in the Holy Spirit and uh, the re reaction or the response uh, in our lives is uh, negative. It's, uh, someone's feelings are hurt or they they uh, they're it just we don't expect you know there's something about us Pollyannish Christians you know we think everybody's should love one another and we should all get along and everybody should be happy with me because I'm a Catholic priest and I'm saying, you know, I'm preaching the gospel, so why are you taking issue with me kind yeah. of thing? We sometimes feel like uh, if we are following the Lord that life should be easier, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, But that's not what Jesus says. He, he says many times in many different ways that following him is going to make life more difficult here on earth, um, that there's going to be suffering and challenges, and that and what he does promise us ultimately is that we're, he's going to be there with us throughout it. Uh, that's what his guarantee is. Not that it's going to be easy, but that he's going right. to be there. Um, right. And so we see, even before Jesus, right, uh, many of the prophets, including Jeremiah, who's featured in our first reading today, um, he has the same thing, right? He is preaching the truth, what God has told him to preach, and he faces, they throw him down into a well, a cistern, uh, and they, they're planning to leave him there to die, but he is rescued. Um, but even before Jesus, when you spoke the word of God, um, there was consequences, a risk that we had to face. Yeah. Right, and uh, that does seem to be the setup, right? From the very beginning, the garden, uh, God creates all this and it's good and uh, everybody's in harmony, if you will, in communion. And then, of course, the uh, serpent and the, uh, and the dialogue, the tragic dialogue and choice uh, comes up out of that. And so, boom, uh, dissension breaks out. I was um, thinking of a couple things. A Protestant uh, theologian called uh, um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Mm. Mm -hmm. He is famous for having written a book called The Cost of Discipleship. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we don't have to look too far for this because Jesus, our model and Lord, you know, obviously, he broke through the values of this world and sin precisely through a very uncomfortable, painful, and conflictual uh, death. Right. And uh, so that's Dietrich's point mm -hmm. well and throughout i mean this is the tension jesus is pinpointing the tension that has been happening throughout his ministry between him and the pharisees and sadducees and the scribes right so his very nature what he is preaching the good news is going to cause conflict what it's not his desire isn't the conflict the conflict comes when other people realize that if they follow him they're going to have to change their lives right the New Atheists, by the way, uh, Dawkins and company, uh, they, uh, uh, this is their major point, and I believe it is also a, a major cause of people leaving the church, and that is that they don't think there should be any conflict around God. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people, they get tired of people fighting, you know, and the, the conflict ultimately is a sign of the Holy Spirit, action of the Holy Spirit, because uh, as a matter of fact, it is the place where, and throughout the history of the church, right, the uh, truth has erupted in 
and out of a two well-intended parties in conflict with one another. And so then... Uh, to, to be clear, there are some conflicts that are not good. <laughs> yes, but right. when Holy Spirit right. is involved, right? right. So yeah. we have the tension... In the right. early church, the tension between the Gentile members and the Jewish members, right? And so that's that tension that, he's, that Father's talking about where uh, right. ultimately it led to the church growing and opening up the doors wider to more and more people in the that's world. Right. Right. Um, so there is... When Holy Spirit is involved, conflict leads to... Uh, God's grace right. pouring out right. in the world. And when I say you use the word conflict, I do not mean violence mm -hmm. and abuse. Right. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is sincere people disagreeing about important issues having to do with God and uh, and, so, lo and in love right. conflicting with right. each other so that they can right. come to the truth. Right. So I don't know how this applies to all of us. You were saying uh, that uh, as priests, we are all, all of us have been, and even after a lot, an old dog like me, uh, you think you're delivering God's message, you're trying to build up the church and build up the faith of others, and inevitably somebody will come to you at the door of the church and in tears or uh, angry uh, about what we have said. And that's very disturbing to us because that's not our intention. Uh, yeah. But we probably should. Well, first of all, I said, "Well, did I say something stupid?" Which <laughs> is always well, possible. Sometimes that here. happens. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, but the other thing is that we have to say, uh, you know, and I hear myself saying this as a pastor all the time. When someone comes to me and is really a fundamental disagreement, and I said, "Well, I understand," and. You can see that people say, you understand? I said, yes. <laughs> you are a good person. I am a good person. I am trying to do my best. And I understand that to some people, it's just not going to be acceptable. That doesn't mean that what I'm proposing or what I'm saying is unacceptable. I, but I'll take your advice and maybe I should frame it more lovingly or gently or something like that. But, you know, to uh, understand that conflict is... A natural uh, reaction or response to good intentioned people following uh, their hearts and uh, and so we have to stick together I guess that's the point of the call it's communion yeah yeah to move beyond any uh, divisions and to continue to preach the word in spite right. of difficulty right how many deathbeds have we been I don't to bring this up but the uh, parent is dying and what is the message from uh, the parent to the kids because there's always a little something you know when two or more are gathered mm -hmm. there's a uh, conflict especially in the family and we heard a lot about that in the gospel today uh, the parent is always saying you kids you need to stick together mm -hmm. you you are family you belong to each other so in a sense I think God's saying that in the church you it's okay to disagree but you've got to stick together you are one body in Christ mm -hmm. God bless you all. Have a good week. Take care.